Have you heard of photogrammetry? Now, it is the method of extracting information from a 2D photo of a real life structure or object. This could be like an apple, a building, or even a full on country. Well, in today's episode, we will be joined by artists from the Future Through Memory Project to understand how they use photogrammetry as a way of preserving culture, memory, and home. I see the white sand and I see the water and it makes me think of my little island in the Caribbean. Photogrammetry! <laughs> Hi, Lillian. Hi. How are you? Good. That's good. Thanks for coming all the way from Vancouver. Great to be here. You are an artist, a creative, a researcher. Can you tell me about how photogrammetry comes into play with all of the different hats that you wear? I do a lot of photogrammetry of building facades and objects usually centered around Chinatowns across North America and also spaces that are really important to me. Can you tell me a little bit more about photogrammetry? Photogrammetry is a method of scanning using photography. So it's different from like 3D modeling like you would on software and you just build something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. It allows us to take photos of a physical object building location in reality and bring it into a digital space. A lot of the way Photogrammetry is traditionally used is for archaeology based on photography of like, you know, a very fragile artifact item location that you maybe can't touch or extract that people will 3D scan it just to like have that model that you can then, you know, investigate a bit further. That's a really great example because for us to engage with it physically might damage it. So. Walk me through how exactly you can go around photogrammetry with your phone. How it usually works is you take photos either with your phone, digital camera, anything like that, and mm -hmm. you just kind of walk around the space. Each time you take a photo, that's like one point of view. Mm -hmm. If you imagine a quilt, each photo taken is like a little square of that. And then what the software does is it stitches all these photos together to then create a 3D model. Wow. One of the really nice things about photogrammetry is when you have things rendered, you kind of see everything as a whole. But what that kind of allows us to do is view something from like an angle we might usually not be able to see from. So from uh, 360, up and down, from like my bird's eye view, from below. I'm wondering if you can tell me a little bit more about why you've chose the places that you've chosen to, to do photogrammetry. It was just kind of an exploration for myself to learn about, you know, Cantonese culture, Chinese culture, Canadian history too. That is really nice to have this sort of space documented for myself and being able to see it from a different perspective. My relationship to that space, which is kind of what I like to um, talk about too in the different workshops where I help people take their own kind of photogrammetric scans mm -hmm. um, and build VR spaces from them, which we usually call just like memory spaces. That's so cool. And, and the workshop series that's called Future Through Memory. Yeah, the group kind of started with um, my, with myself and my thesis professor, Imani Men, and we run multiple panels and workshops with individuals and having guest speakers to kind of just create space and programming um, about this um, diasporic experience. For the first series of the workshop, so we had about six to eight individuals, um, and how it worked was that we had mostly workshops through Zoom. The only requirements that people really needed was um, like a smartphone that they could take photos or a camera. So uh, we kind of assisted people with a lot of demos of how to make 3D scans. And then from there, each individual kind of developed their own space. They're centered around Toronto's Chinatown or people felt that they wanted to lean maybe a bit more in their own diasporic experience. And yeah, I think just in the the creation of the virtual spaces using photogrammetry and continuing to 
explore either own identity, own memories, kind of pinpointing of like, this is really important and this is kind of like things that are constantly changing. And that's kind of why I've decided to take a 3D scan of it and that this is like a space I can um, remember and as it continues to change and then being able to kind of virtually visit those spaces afterwards. This is such rad technology. Now I really want to see it. I'm curious to see like exactly how it works. And we have a few spaces set up in the VR dome if you'd like to go see. Yeah, yes please. This is the VR dome that we're using to um, kind of test and share a lot of the VR spaces that we've been working on. This is so cool. I've never been inside of a dome such as this. And working with me is Emini Men. He's kind of like the brains behind Hi. kind of setting up everything <laughs> for us. We'll actually have um, a few of the participants from the workshop join us. If you want to pull up one of the beanbag chairs and then we can, we can kind of walk you through all the spaces. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here with us today, Yvonne. Thank you. What are, what are we looking at right now? This is my space, this is my East Chinatown. I was down here basically every week. So I'd come here for groceries, uh, we'd have family dinners here, I went to Chinese school here. And I really wanted to highlight this area because, you know, it's often like the little brother to downtown uh, Chinatown, mm -hmm. um, but it also really showcases the changes that a lot of Chinatowns are facing, you know, just all across North America, which is, you know, changing demographics, gentrification. Um, a lot of stores are just coming in and out. Um, and I really centered it on the um, Pai Fong, which is mm -hmm. like the first um, Chinese gate in Toronto. When Yvonne was kind of sharing the piece and having these sort of like time stamps on the side, I found really like interesting and exciting. You're going from the past and you kind of walk through the gates and then you're kind of in the present. This is actually a passage through time rather than one moment in time. It was my hope that like with this, I could share this with my niece and nephew actually, because you know, they're probably gonna have a very different experience of Chinatown that I had, um, just even connection to our heritage. I think that's something I really appreciate about photogra photogrammetry is when you're piecing together these like individual parts to make something with meaning or like to tell us more meaningful stories. Josh, can you please tell me a bit about what we're looking at and the space? So what we're looking at is like a series of buildings and locations in my mom's village. And it's back in like South China. Basically, it's like um, photos I took from my visit back then. One of the exciting parts was that he brought in a lot of photos from 2015. And we kind of did this experiment where we actually saw these old archival photos come to life into this model. I'm, I'm curious to know like all of that, that emotional work that went into this piece. Um, significant for me as part of the Hakka Chinese community, but also from the Caribbean. I've always had this like outsider's perspective on different cultures and identities mm -hmm. and how I, you know, how I could bring that together somehow in the space. It's also represented work in terms of the gaps in like my knowledge and my memory. And it's, it's very expressive of, the, of that, how I think about myself and my identity and my culture. It is a very intimate setting. So thank you for sharing this with us. Hello. Hey, hey, it's good to see you. Hey, nice to meet you. Look at all of this. This is beautiful. You know, I was trying to capture one of my memories that I had um, growing up in Chinatown in my early 20s. I mm -hmm. wanted to capture um, this restaurant here, um, which I usually frequented. And everyone would have um, these little like signs on printer paper where they were like, oh, I love this restaurant so much <laughs> and then they're like you can like um, eat your food there and like it was a really good time. I have many nice memories there with my friends. While it might look like just a restaurant to me that you know this is an important kind of marker for someone's you know life and time in a certain period. Mm -hmm. That's a really cool way to look at space. 
I always think that memory is kind of like, it really makes you who you are, right? Like all like the events that you experience, like you're really an amalgamation of all those different things and being able to capture those and reminisce and reflect back on those. I think that's a really important part of ourselves. And it was super cool to work in this project because it was just like a different approach on thinking about memory. Um, for my memory space, one of the biggest memories for me was my kind of key Chinatown experience, which was um, a lot about food. Being really far away from a lot of like food that my mom would make and restaurants and just missing, trying to be closer to um, like Cantonese culture. And I just kind of wanted to recreate that whole scene of, um, you know, just feeling in between the aisles and kind of, you know, surrounded by a lot of like mm -hmm. foods that I miss. So I used a 360 camera mm -hmm. to kind of get this dome background view. So a lot of the scans here are of just like the different aisles within mm -hmm. the grocery store. Um, the photos are from some of the different shops in Chinatown. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing some, some shelves and some, are those lemons? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the lemons. Yeah, and the lemons from all angles. From all angles. Well, look at this. It's a reunion, a little workshop in person reunion. Yes. <laughs> we know that it's so valuable to hold on to these memories and these spaces, but I guess for each of you, like what about it is is the most important thing to you? You know, things change with time. Places can change, like the buildings that are there, like even like the interior. So like mm -hmm. being able to just like capture that um, and bring you back to that given like place and time that you've experienced. For the project, like for the future, it's like thinking like, oh, this space might not exist anymore mm -hmm. in the next few years, decades. Yeah. yeah. And I think for like future generations, mm -hmm. like there's a way for us to let people see how things have changed. What would you say, Yvonne? This is like a really interesting medium. Mm -hmm. It's like not perfect. It's a little bit collagey. And I like that it was also like a collaborative process. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, it is one person's memory, but like when you capture it, then you can, you know, like connect to other people, you can add on to it and it kind of like builds into this like amorphous, uh, but kind of like, you know, blobby memory of the past, but mm -hmm. it's also like a real true, like m thing that you can connect to. It's very complicated, like being part of like that whole Chinese diaspora. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's like so important for me, like doing a project like this. So like, I'm able to reflect on like my own identities and also for other people, it also be like relatable. It's part of a, a collective story and, mm -hmm. and that's always going to be important. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's been so lovely to chat with all of the artists today and hear about their experiences with photogrammetry. I grew up in Scarborough and over the years, a lot has changed. After hearing about Lillian's work, it's got me thinking a lot about the spots in Scarps that mean a lot to me, like my convenience store around the corner, my shawarma spot, and all of the furniture stores on Kennedy Road. Maybe next time I'm there, I'll snap a few pics. Thanks as always for joining me.